Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. I'm Dr. Rebecca Finlayson Harper, the founder of Family Civility, and this is Let's Talk Family Civility. Now, I'm really excited today because I finally got Dr. Burnett Joseph on the show today. I'm so excited, so excited. So you know the way it goes. If you like the show, please, please comment. We love to hear from everyone. We want to hear, you know, comment, share, like, and make sure you can get the rebroadcast on YouTube. So we want to hear your comments. Dr. Vernet, so excited to have you. He is just a powerhouse. I, I, I could take the whole show reading his bio, but I'm going to read just some snippets. Um, Dr. Vernette Joseph is the founder of Productive Business Civility and the creator of the National Productive Business Civility Day, celebrated annually two days before Family Civility Day on November 13. America's number one productivity speaker, strategist, and consultant. He is a World Civility Ambassador, a fellow World Civility Ambassador, national statesman, and award-winning serial entrepreneur, author of over 25 books and five bestsellers, founder of Live to Produce Enterprises, LLC, and founder of the Productive Business Summit. Dr. Renee, uh, so, Yes, so we're very excited to have him. He has numerous, numerous awards. And I just, and you're kind of wondering, hold on, what does business have to do with family? Well, I think family has a lot to do with business, right? Dr. Vernet, thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Harper. It is always a pleasure uh, to be in your midst. When we're talking family civility, man, who else could you talk to but the founder of the Family Civility Initiative, the day and the institute, Dr. Harper. It's a blessing to be on with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about what is productive business civility? And why do you feel it's necessary that civility is needed in business? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Thank you. That is such an awesome question. A lot of people have been asking that, you know, as of late. When when I think of productive business civility, Dr. Harper, I, I'd say it this way. Number one, productive business civility is founded on a principle of people treatment. And we have to understand that that principle of people treatment is God's actual concern. All people who were created in his image and likeness are valuable to God. So if we as people are valuable to God, then we must become valuable to one another. So productive business civility is the new paradigm, if you would, for business civility in action. Well, you're asking the question, how does business and how does civility interact? I have come to understand that civility is the engine that drives our world. Civility is the engine that drives our world. Well, in business, we have to get this. This is where business and people are of equal value. So once you start putting people into the mix, there has to be a civility component. Civility, what is civility? It's treating people with dignity, kindness, respect, love, so on and so forth. So the concept of productive business civility is that we are all equal in time, but we are separated by how we produce in it. And when we understand that uh, the most powerful commodity and currency for business is the value of people, their ideas and their solutions, then we must marry the two together, productive business civility. Now, there are three pillars, Dr. Harper, three pillars that productive business civility hinges off of. And those pillars are kindness, respect and synergy and synergy both internally and externally. So watch this. Proper civility in the workplace saves millions of dollars in performance and productivity each and every day. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Proper civility in the home <laughs> changes our society as a whole. 
So if civility truly is the engine that drives our world and productivity is the, the methodology or the methodical way of thinking, now what you have is when you put the two together, here's what you eliminate. You eliminate excuses, you yeah. eliminate distractions, and you eliminate what I like to call duplicative thinking. So productive business civility is the thing that maintains order, structure, and discipline wherever it is implemented. Yes. So that is just a snippet of what productive business civility is. Now, those who practice this way of life and this way of thinking, watch what happens to them. It enables them to produce at optimal levels while creating, watch this, a productive environment that has solutions. A productive environment that has mm -hmm. solutions. So I hope that people understand that these are not just a, a bunch of words that are put you know, on top of one another, but they're systematically created to bring about a solution base and a performance base to individuals their lives, as well as their businesses. Hopefully that helps a little bit. It's amazing. And, you know, one of the things that I've preached for so many years is, you know, we have sick leave, which, of course, encourages being sick. <laughs> I'm like, the only time I can get off work is if I'm sick. So I have mm -hmm. to be sick in order to get a break. One of the things that I preach about and advocate for is parent leave instead of sick leave mm, mm. because we are getting healthier with mindfulness with positivity spirituality i mean i can't knock on wood i can't remember the last time i've actually been sick mm. and then with everybody working at home now you really don't need sick leave mm. but what we need is parent leave mm. because how many of us can actually go to our boss right now especially as a single parent home and say, you know what? I need to meet with my teacher, my child's teacher today, hmm. or I need to go to an assembly today because my child is performing, or I need to take my child to the doctor, right? So many things happen where you hit the nail on the head. This is where civility in business comes into play. Mm -hmm. When you have a civil boss that understands that being a parent is just as important as working, then you will have a productive parent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because here's my point. How many, and you are a parent, you know, how many times have you been at work knowing your child needs you somewhere else? How productive are you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the mind, the mind immediately goes to where you are responsible. See, that's a whole nother level when you begin to talk a uh, responsibility and authority. Well, see, a mind that is divided, a mind that is in, in two different places cannot produce at optimal levels. But when you take all the distractions out of the way and you let that person know, well, you know what? If you can be as productive as you were if you were here, then of course you can go take care of X, Y, or Z. That now frees up an individual to say, I have the autonomy to take care of this business, but I know I still have to be about my other business. Does it, that make sense? It does make completely yeah. sense. And it brings, if you, what's the, what's the golden question? Do unto others, you know, if it was done to me, would I appreciate mm -hmm. it? Well, it's yeah. the same type of thing of the golden rule. If I know my boss is giving me time to be a mother, mm -hmm. then I'm going to do what I can for my boss. Come on now. Because That's I'm going to show loyalty. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the top and the bottom. Listen, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And when you are taking care of the family unit, that's when people will go above and beyond. When people know how much you appreciate them, how much you value them, that's when they will go the extra mile. People treatment is absolutely essential in this day and age. Exactly. And that is what civil, that's what you're promoting in civility, in yes. productive business civility. Amazing. 
I agree completely and utterly. So let's go on to, I mean, that already we've given, what, three different pieces of advice that are phenomenal to bosses. What advice is, and you've already told bosses, hey, you own a business, we need to be civil because your human capital is the most valuable. Absolutely. So the next question is what, and we kind of went into it. Mm -hmm. how, how do we need family empowerment? So when we empower the family, how does that help a productive business? <laughs> Absolutely. This is a wonderful question. And when you think about it, you kind of already have the answer. So, so why do we need it uh, in, in the family and, and how does it empower the family? Well, let's look at that. So number one, we have to think about the family unit is the genesis, is the genesis of all humanity. If you think about it, well, let's look at this. It's also the genesis when you talk about values, character, integrity, honor, respect, loyalty, authority, right? People treatment, and then ultimately civility. Where do you learn all of these characteristics? You learn them in the family. You see, the family is the very first line of defense. If you don't know how to appreciate and treat your mother, your father, your siblings, how can you have a respectful way of thinking, a, a respectful mentality or mindset towards the authorities who are on the outside? So the way that you remember, I said it's the genesis. It's the genesis because this is where everything starts. This is where you get all of your faculties. This is where you get uh, uh, the, watch this. If it was a seed, this is where the seed is being nurtured. So when I look at civility and uh, uh, productive business civility, or even Civility 360, when we get to that, yeah. this is where we teach those principles of kindness yeah. and respect. This is where kindness and respect becomes what I call the universal law, but it's yeah. learned in the home. It starts the pillar, the building block, the foundation, the blueprint for you to become a civil or productive citizen starts within your home. So how does it empower family? Absolutely, it, it empowers family because this is where you get the bedrock of who you are supposed to be and how you will treat others and how you will actually become a cohesive and collective unit within your family. If mm -hmm. you show me a family that is dysfunctional, I can guarantee you in society, they will be dysfunctional. If you show me a family that is loving, caring, nurturing, and they're providing the right tools, tips, strategies, principles, practices, or philosophies within the home, Wow. then I can show you kids, I can show you adults that are going to do the exact same thing when they leave their home. Now, are there instances where the things that are being taught at home may not be practiced on the outside? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. But that's where you have to show at the family level, at the family level, why these things are important. If you were taught how to be kind to one another at home, then 98 Point nine percent of the time, you're going to be kind when you leave your home. If you were taught how to respect uh, your elders at home, 98.9% of the time, you're going to respect your elders in society. If you were taught the value of servanthood at home, then 98.9% .9 of the time, you're going to learn how to serve when you're not at home. Everything, everything starts within the home. I mean, again, when you look at business, you learned it from home. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to sit down and my parents used to, they owned businesses, they talk about their business and they used to bring us in purposely to listen to them. And we all became entrepreneurs. We all became that way because that's how we learned at home. It's your first mm -hmm. teaching ground. It's your first formation. Mm -hmm. your, you know, your first way of learning how to be in society. Let's now go to Civility 360. What is, you mentioned it um, when you were speaking, what is Civility 360? Civility 360 is a way of life, if you would ask me. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a radio show. It's a global initiative. Um, and it's, it's, it's what we would call writing the ship. Mm-hmm. Civility 360 is also a mentality. It's a mindset that hinges off the principle of civility for all. And why is that important? Because everyone, going back to one of the principles of productive business civility, is everyone is important. Everyone is valued. Everyone is appreciated. 7.8 billion people on the planet, and they all have value. They all are appreciated. When we understand that and we understand the premise of civility for all, you can now see why civility 360, if you were in school and you talk about 360 degrees, you want civility not sometimes, but all the time, every day, all day, anywhere and everywhere. That's what civility 360 is. It's an essential part of life. Therefore, it should be experienced in all parts of life. And when we can teach people how to be civil, then we will have a better world. And that's what Civility 360 is. If you've listened to the radio show or any of the platforms uh, that we've created with that, it's simply our way to teach people how to put civility in action. Civility influence and action are the deliverables that come from Civility 360. We don't want to be stagnant. We want to be fluid. We want people to understand that civility is the engine that drives our world. You cannot have a civilized world without civility being modeled in the world. So as we say in Jamaica, empty pan make the most noise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, we, t- we can talk all we want about being civil. We can talk all we want about what civility is, but yeah. we actually have to be civil. And be it. Starts, again, as you agree, it starts with the family. We learn civility with the family. And it's, you know, one of the things that I speak about is not just civility and being civil, but when people are not civil to you, and this is where the 360 comes into play. Mm-hmm. And, and this is where, especially when a family comes into play, how do you handle that? How do you handle even a family member who doesn't, um, oh, and we have a qu- question, define civility. But before we do that, what is it that we can do if a family just doesn't get it? Doesn't, you know, I'm going the old way. And this is who I am. It's the subservient and the hierarchy and the power struggle in the family. I mean, let's talk it straight. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. And if we don't acknowledge civility, you know, one of the things I speak about is know when to say, you know what, I love you. I respect your perspective. Mm-hmm. But if you're not going to be civil to me, I cannot damage myself. I, I have a lovely saying, I love you, but I love myself more. Right, right, right. Well, well, let's first uh, make sure we answer the question. Let's let's first make sure we answer the question. In its truest form, if you look at civility, civility literally is a formal uh, a way of being polite. It's about treating others with dignity and respect right? It's courtesy, it's behavior. But taking civility a little bit deeper than that is what does the Bible say? The Bible says, treat others how you want to be treated. Would you disrespect yourself? No. So don't disrespect others. Do you want to be loved? Then you must show love to others. When you pull these principles out, watch this. He who hath friends must first show himself friendly. These are all pieces and portions of civility. It's people treatment, it's kindness, it's respect, it's love. It's actually walking out, if you would, and you'd like to dive into it, the fruit of the spirit. That's what it is. It's civility at its finest. And if we had that in our world, we wouldn't be faced with the things that we are faced with now because the color of your skin should not change you as a part of humanity. Mm. It's putting people above processes and uh, 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 principles, if you would, right? So take that for a moment and then start and look at how this works. If I love myself, then I also must love others. 
Mm -hmm. If I respect myself, then I must also respect others. If I want to be uh, uh, appreciated, then I must also appreciate others. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. But the problem that we have is a confidence issue and um, generational trauma. Yes. generational hurt where we actually don't love ourselves. And this is one of the premises I have with civility is how can we say do unto others as we want them to do unto us when we don't want good things done to us because we don't think we deserve it. And I want to just acknowledge Linda Moreno. Thank you so much for coming in from California and the gorgeous Yamaja Jubilee. What a, I'm breathing, Yamaja. I'm breathing. She's the most beautiful spirit, Dr. Vanette. I have mm. to see two of you. And Not of course, Raymond Hallar from New York City. Love, respect you always. The founder of whatever is going on right now, he's the one who started it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> the problem that we have mm -hmm. is that, and, then, and going back to what my studies in the book, when I wrote the book, is, is that when we don't, when we've been belittled, whether mm. it's by a sibling or we've been verbally abused by a family member or by a husband or we've watched domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We grew up thinking we don't deserve better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we don't give better. Mm -hmm. And this is where I love what you're saying about civility 360, not mm -hmm. 180, mm -hmm. 360, because we have to be civil to ourselves. Yes, yes. You know, one of the things that I really, really appreciate when I look at this journey, think of it from this perspective. True leadership empowers everyone in their own right, in their own industry, and in their own narrative. Mm -hmm. You know, this philosophy encompasses all industries. It doesn't matter if you're in education, finance, you know, tourism. Civility is a thing that you cannot get away from. It's, it's the universal language, if you would. Everyone wants to be treated with kindness and respect. So it doesn't matter what part of the globe you are on. It doesn't matter what continent or country or what region you're in. Everyone deserves to be treated with respect. Yeah. So civility, that's why I say that civility is the engine that drives our world. And, and specifically when we talk in the family unit, because if I, as a child, am watching my mother and father's relationship and I can see civility there, I can see true people treatment, then what am I going to grow up to do? Or what do I desire when I have my own family? So why would it be any different in any industry, in the medical industry? Uh, in, in, in the financial arena, um, you know, no matter where you are, you have to see civility as a way of life. It's not a fad. It's not something that you do sometimes. It should be something that's always there, uppermost in your mind. People treatment is important to God. Therefore, it should be important to us. Oh, agreed, agreed, agreed. And, you know, it's fantastic that you mention. you know, maybe we should put civility in the wedding vows. <laughs> <laughs> Not just love, and, but, you know, be civil to each mm -hmm. other and teach yeah. civility in our family because that's where it comes from. Yeah. And, and, you know, we reach out and the times have been hard with COVID and we have to look at COVID as we've, I mean, if anybody had to learn civility, it's in the past few months because mm -hmm. we're now all in the same vicinity. We could not leave each other. We could not be away from each other. And yet we had to say, hold on, I had to think of other people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And be very conscious of other people. And that is just amazing that we have to look mm -hmm. at civility. Now let's get to, let's move to now productivity. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, one of the things of family civility is once we're civil with each other, we can now work together. Yes. How can we be productive as a family? <laughs> I love that question. Well, as we look at it, let's think about that again. Family. The family unit is the genesis of society. 
So if you're going to be productive in your community, if you're going to be productive in a region of the world, again, it should start at home. Mm -hmm. So let me give you my thought pattern and process. Families can be productive on multiple fronts. Number one, let's talk about internal synergy, uh, promoting love as a family unit. You have to teach love, right? So that you can actually exude love. If you don't know how to give love, how can you be civil? So the first thing is internal synergy. It's believing about love, what it takes to actually build the family as a unit. So love covers a multitude of sin. That's what <laughs> our great book said. So if that's the case, if I learn how to love in spite of in my home, in the family unit, then I can learn how to love outside of my household. So that's first thing, internal synergy, making sure that each person knows, each person understands their actual part in the process. The next thing would be individual responsibility, individual responsibility. And when we look at that, individual responsibilities and authority is developing expectations by taking care of oneself, taking care of your household, and then taking care of your community. Now, I see the question, what is love? If I were to take you to 1 Corinthians, uh, the 13th chapter, many people often look at that as only the, the vow uh, for marriage. But when you break that down, it's not just a vow of marriage. It's a way of life. It's an understanding. It's an appreciation for your creator and what he has created in, with, and through you. So love is kind. I mean, we can go down the line with love. Love is something that we must teach ourselves. God so loved the world that he gave. Now watch this. When we break this down, that means love is a giving. It's at first, it's an action word. That's number one. It's oh, not yes. something that you put action. on a wall. And love is an action word. Love is something that you show forth. Love is something that you do, right? Love is, is something that is all encompassing. Well, you can't say you don't love me because you didn't do X. Well, what about A through through Y? Right. So don't throw one person away when five percent of something is not being accomplished. Look at the ninety five that may have been accomplished. Going back to what you said, loving in spite of. In spite of. Yeah. Right? It's it's learning to love that 20 percent, not the 80 percent only. <laughs> One of the biggest things that I've come to understand, Dr. Harper, is this. And this is the hardest thing that anyone will ever have to learn. How do you love the unloving? I don't have a problem with that. That's the problem. And, and uh, no, let's, let's, this is a very good question. And I'm going to get a little bit personal mm -hmm. because that has been my fault when it comes to dealing with people. I look for the positive in anyone, mm -hmm. even a narcissistic, abusive person. And mm -hmm. I would find the good. Because there's always good to love in anyone. I think my problem is, is that I loved the 10%, no matter what, it was 10% good. And this is, and it, it really is that way. And, you know, there are, and this is the problem that we have. And this is why I learn about civility is sometimes I forgive people who aren't civil because they're not civil to themselves. Mm-hmm. But I have to love myself more and not damage myself. Come on. There you go. There you go. In the yeah. sake of love or mm -hmm. for the name of love where, okay, that's putting love as, as you say it a noun, not a verb. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an action word. It's an action word. Yeah, yeah. but doing it's what I do, which was, I say is wrong because guess what I was doing? Mm -hmm. Enabling. Enabling the bad by just focusing on the good mm, mm. Now, that now now this is where this is where we have to start getting a, a, a deeper revelation and understanding of love now i love the fact that you utilize that word enabler something that i've always told people is this i cannot 
Watch me clearly. Please hear mm -hmm. what I am saying and not what I'm not saying. The problem in society today is we replace God in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. I can't be God. I can be a representation and a reflection of who he is, but I can't be him. So I can't in the name of love have you coming directly to me before you would go to God. Yeah. And a lot of time in families, that's what happened. The kids come to the parent before they go to the creator, right? Yeah. So we also have to create, watch this, a way of life that points our children and even our spouses to God first mm -hmm. and then to us. And when you begin to look at love, like we talked about, I mean, love is patient, love is kind, love doesn't envy. I mean, you can go through all of these different things. But at the end of the day, one of the biggest things is that love never fails. Love never, love never fails. fails. But how do you get to that point? You point people back to the, 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 the cord that is in the middle of the threefold cord. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes we try to point them to the person on the left or the right, but the mm -hmm. one that makes it work is the one that's in the middle. And when God becomes your, your, your center, your circumference, your base, your boundary, your everything, then you can exude and walk in love without, you know, becoming or trying to become something that we weren't created to be. There is one source and one source only, and that is God. And that's, again, what COVID has done. Mm -hmm. COVID has brought so many people to stop mm -hmm. and focus on their spirituality. Absolutely. Not the symbolism. Right, right. And that's what we've moved away from, is I think God, in a way, has actually said that. Like, I'm tired of the symbols. I need you to focus on me, not the man-made symbols that people have made of me. Yes. Because we not just put the parents or people in lieu of God. We put a lot of symbols and mm -hmm. buildings and structure and you know, we man-made. Mm -hmm. And we had to come back. And by doing what we have done, we have found our spirituality back. And I loved what you said. There are many, you know, you might just said there are many love languages. Mm -hmm. And I, I love that because it also goes back to civility. Mm-hmm. I can love you, but I have to love you. I have to learn how you love. Mm -hmm. and love how you want to be loved. Yep. I can't love you the way I want to be loved. Come on. And that's that in society today is something that I think uh, during this COVID pandemic that people have to understand. First and foremost, and I've said this all along, I believe that we're going through what we're going through to, to, to re, realign ourselves get recentered, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that we can be repurposed, so that we can be relaunched, because here's what has happened. In society, we have gotten too busy. You know I don't like the word busy, right? Mm -hmm. Because busy equates to me, you're wasting time. Mm -hmm. when, when, when we really think about it and peel the onion back, I believe that God is saying, I am the source, not a resource, not someone who you come to when you're in trouble, not someone that you just stretch your hands out to when you're in need. I am the source. And if I am the source, then you come to me first. You commune with me first. You have a relationship with me first. Let me break it down from this perspective. Mm -hmm. As a parent, you don't want your children to only come to you when they want something. You want them to always come to you. You want them to be able to communicate with you. You want them to be able to ask questions. You want them to be able to feel like they're an active part, an active part of the unit, the family unit. Yes. Why would it be any different with our God? He's our loving, caring, sharing, heavenly father. Yes. He doesn't want to only hear from you when something's wrong. So when we look at this pandemic, what we're actually looking at is God saying, come back to me. Get away from just looking at your job. Get away from uh, the, the worldly possessions. Get away from what uh, this yes. person has, that person has. I need you to sit and understand that it is me that you need. So once we get to that point and we get our relationship back right with God, 
Now we can watch this. The second portion of that is what we're talking about today. It's now refocusing on yeah. the family unit. Yeah. Because once we know who our creator is, we can give our creator the proper praise, worship, honor, and adoration that he deserves. Mm -hmm. Then we now can mimic that in our family unit. When the fa listen, you you have had families who are like passing ships in the night. Oh, they didn't even that's know funny. what what their uh, each other's schedules were. When did I see you last? Oh, I think I saw you on Sunday, or I, I may have seen you once in the week. Or the so teenagers saying that oh, I haven't seen my teenager outside their room for three days. <laughs> right, right, right. So when you look at those things, it was necessary. It is necessary. Now, the, the, the crazy thing about it is this, Dr. Harper. Some will, some won't, some do, some don't. Some people will go through this thing and they won't grow not one bit. But then you will have others who will take this time to grow from what is actually happening. So let, let me go backwards. One, internal synergy, promoting love as a family unit. Two, individual responsibilities and authority, which is developing expectations, learning how to take care of self first, mm -hmm. then taking care of household and community. The third thing would be to establish what we call structure, create some type of system, some type of discipline, some type of routine that causes your family to be a cohesive unit. You cannot inspect what you don't expect. And, and, and what most people miss is that you're expecting something, but you haven't put out the expectation for that. You haven't gone back and checked to see is the thing that you put out actually doing what you want it to do. So you cannot have a, 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 an expectation of something where you haven't set up the order, the structure or the discipline. Mm -hmm. for it. Does that make sense? I mean, it does completely. I mean, you look at it. One of the things that I teach my family civility workers when they're working with the family is group dynamics. Mm -hmm. And we actually do goal setting as an individual. So she, the, the family civility worker is taught mm -hmm. to do goal setting with each family individual, but then to bring the family together and uh, and say, these are my individual goals, but what are your goals as a family? And how can each person help the other person mm, to achieve their personal goals? Right. And this is, so in other words, we use the SMART goals and we use the interviewing and we do the psychosocial history of the family, not of one member of the family. One member of the family cannot go to a social service worker and speak on behalf of all the members. That's right. Come on so now. What we do is family civility workers are trained to go into the home, teach exactly what you're saying. How do we work as a family unit? How can all our members of our family who are individuals in their own right fit in the group dynamics mm -hmm. and then three how do we work together to not only achieve the goals of the household but achieve help each other achieve the goals that they need to achieve yes yes I love it. exactly what you said you have to inspect to expect you know what i mean it, it's mm -hmm. like okay these are my expectations in this family mm -hmm. you know um it, and I'm, I'm going to go back to what Yamaja was saying is the divinity in all beings. And she said it's covered up by addictions and other behavioral patterns. What I find, yes, it's true because you can, you know, when you look at studies of addictions, it's loneliness, mm -hmm. it's lack of purpose. Mm -hmm. You tend to self-medicate. Yeah, isolation. Um, depression is you self-medicate for depression or anxiety. Why do you have these things? Because you do not find your place. Yeah. After in your family, well, you don't find it in family and you don't find it at home. Mm -hmm. That's why I loved what you said is love this in spite of, mm -hmm. right? And this is where you come from with the self-medication. And when you find God and put him as source, you can never be alone. Then I love what you know, she also said again is sit down, shut up and listen. Contemplation, meditation and positivity, uplifting music to praise the big G as she called big G is God. Right. right? And I love how she says it. But mm -hmm. you're, you're agreeing in what COVID has done is literally taught us to where he's basically said, sit down, be mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. And you now have time to think. And 
yeah. how many people have come back to God when they're really thinking? A lot, a lot. When you look at the situation, many people are looking at it as a bad thing, but in all things, you you know, every action has a reaction, you know, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, you've just got to decide, am I going to grow through this situation? We all will go through it. The question is, will you grow through it? So when you begin to talk about, you know, uh, loneliness, okay, mm -hmm. uh, isolation and insulation are the two areas that the enemy brings about in one's mind to get them alone, all alone, right? Mm -hmm. All alone. So when you look at that, if you don't have God, then you will feel like you're all alone, mm -hmm. but all one. You can look at it as all alone or all one. Mm -hmm. When you begin to look at it from that perspective, God is already my source. God is on the inside mm -hmm. of me. The Holy Spirit is with me, leading, guiding, comforting, teaching me that I'm not all alone. No. I'm all one, but I'm not all alone. But if you allow your mindset to say you're insulated, you're you're isolated from everyone else, now you start looking around and no one knows the trouble that I'm going through. This is only happening to me. You start to speak. Watch this. Self-talk is very toxic if you allow it to be. Mm. Self-talk. Now, what most people need to understand People rarely believe what other people about say about themselves, but they always believe what they say about themselves. So self-talk, you've got to have the right self-talk. You've got to have the Holy Spirit walking alongside of you to remind you who you are, whose you are, and what you were created to do. So when you begin to understand you are. Now you can start talking to yourself and reminding yourself who you were created to be, right? Yeah. That then gets you out of isolation and insulation and allows you to, watch this, have an open mind and open heart to where God wants to point you as an arrow. And now you can strike the mark. That is why it's imperative for us to have people around us who will speak life into our situation instead of death or discouragement into mm -hmm. our situation. And you only get that when you have proper accountability partners that will check in on you, that will see when you are off and that will challenge you to get back in line with who God created you to be. Agreed. And, and this is, again, what the family civility workers are trained to do. They stick with the family until they're ready to stand on their own feet. But they check in every week and say, have you done what you needed to do this week? Have you done that? And, you know, this is the thing with family. And this is they can be productive. They can be empowered to achieve their own goals. They don't have to sit down and wait for something or the government to hand them something or say, I need these resources. Mm. And I can tell you this, when you come from the Caribbean and when you come from Africa or other developing countries, we are very resourceful people. Mm -hmm. We don't sit down and wait. Mm -hmm. We, As we say in Jamaica, ton han make fashion. Mm -hmm. and we will take something and make it what we need to make it. Mm. And this is where the world needs to reach. Yes. So in the sense of we have to say, I am going, yes, I may need help with, say, one person guiding me. But one of the things that I also teach to family civility workers is you are not an expert on the family's life. Mm -hmm. Family on. is the only expert on their lives. That's it. That's right? it. Your client is the only expert on their lives. You are not. That's very important to understand. There is no cookie cutter mode to life. No. So as you're teaching, and that is, I believe, something that is imperative for you know the workers to understand is that you are not an expert on someone else's life. You may have some knowledge, some understanding, or some wisdom when it comes to situations. Or resources to help them. Right, but you must understand that every family dynamic is different. 
Agreed. And you have to deal with it as such. Every family dynamic, what may work for one may not work for another. So let God be the one that is the teacher, uh, that let the Holy Spirit show you what is necessary for that specific family. And that's why I always teach people in counseling and coaching and consulting, you have two ears for a reason. Make sure you listen twice, if not four times as much as you speak so that you can get the information so that the revelation can flow. So let's go into that. What coaching, what are your services? What do you do? What, you know, we already touched on Civility 360. Please, please go to the Facebook page, go to the YouTube page. They're amazing shows. I mean, I'm never disappointed, especially when Dr. V gets excited. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I mean, it's just, you really have amazing shows. And Thank I love the 360. So it is really a full circle of having to show, again, Civility inward to civility outward the internal voice versus the external voice what else you do a lot of counseling you do a lot of um consulting what is it how can we get in touch with you what services do you offer absolutely well one thing i always say dr harper is this i'm not hiding i'm available if you google you. my name you'll find me um not hiding by any means but as you mentioned if it's for civility 360 you could always go to civility 360.com mm -hmm. uh that's one way that you can get in touch with uh, myself or sir clyde rivers um there is an, a contact uh page there uh, for you to get in touch with. Again, for me on any social platform is Dr. V.A. Joseph, and you'll be able to find me there. Uh, in terms of, you know, different services that I provide, it really depends on you as an individual. Um, you know, I'm on the radio and I teach people how to start their own shows and how to create their own digital footprint and platform. Uh, that information you can find at uh, live to produce.com. That's my other website. Uh, there are many of them. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I teach people how to become authors, how to tell their story, how to change uh, uh, the narrative of their lives and how to become the authority, if you would, on a specific topic. Um, I train speakers, but we have other, you know, um, ambassadors out there that do that. Uh, I mean, there are a plethora of things that I do. It depends on what you need. So if there's something that has resonated with you today that you believe uh, that would be of assistance, uh, all you have to do is just reach out. My email is contact uh, live, L-I-V-E, produce. So that's contact live produce at gmail.com. Uh, and you can always reach out with any type of inquiries there. Uh, I teach people how to be productive in business, in life. I teach uh, countries and governments how to do the same and how to uh, promote what we would call productive business through productive business civility. Uh, I host several summits, as you have heard, uh, the Civility 360 summits uh, that we do for whether it be youth, uh, family, countries. Uh, we do it. On, on a global scale. Um, again, as a world civility ambassador, there's a lot of work that's being done internationally. I truly enjoy, to be honest with you, Dr. Harper, helping people to produce from their place of passion. Yeah. So when you talk consulting, coaching, you know, all, all of those things, to me, it's a way of life. Anything that deals with productivity is where I am. Let me share three tips, if I could, uh, Dr. Harper. Thank you. I was about to say, what are the three tips? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, let me share three tips uh, with your listening and viewing audience on how productivity can empower uh, families uh, to be stronger. Number one, it would be to develop a strong culture of execution. You see, people like to talk. But talk is cheap unless there's action that backs up that talk. So in your family unit, develop a strong culture of execution, getting the right things done, not a task list, not a to-do list, but getting the right things done. That's number one. Number two, create what I would call a heartbeat of service to humanity. 
create a heartbeat of service to humanity. You're never more like Jesus than when you're giving and you're serving. So when you create a heartbeat of service to humanity, you will never, ever have a problem. Why? Because people enjoy being helped. So if you learn how to serve, then you will never be lacking. Uh, the third thing that I would say is implement civility as a way of life. Implement civility as a way of life. If you want to produce, if you want to empower or impact people, if you want to build stronger nations, if you want to build a stronger community, if you want to be a, a, a part of a strong society, then implement civility as a way of life. These three simple tips will literally transform your life. And when you recognize that God is your source, my friends, you will never, ever be wanting again because God is the God who provides. He is the God who brings provision. He's the God who brings protection. And when you have God on your side, there's absolutely nothing that you cannot accomplish. Amazing. Well, I just want to say one thing. You know, Yamaja is my sister in my tribe, Bring Who You Are, which airs every Saturday, every other Saturday. So actually this Saturday we have a um, Bring Who You Are show on domestication. Mm. And we've gone through family, education, government, um, just everything we're going through health and you imagine is our is my sister in my tribe and she now wants you on her personal show <laughs> but you know to you know, dr joseph you know we didn't pray at the beginning mm -hmm. and you know it would just be wonderful if we could end the show with a prayer absolutely because you know i, I it's we have to practice what we preach and yeah, it is and you know i I lost my spirituality. Um, I was so focused on religion and I come from several different religions. If you look at my background, I was born a Jew, grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. My daughter wanted to go back, wanted to discover Judaism. So I went, I, for the first time ever, I went into a synagogue with her. Um, they're christened Anglicans, okay? <laughs> So I come from a multiple religion, bring brought you know life, and what was interesting is I I lost myself because I kept trying to find the religion mm -hmm. and not the spirituality, and through Doctor Rivers, through World Civility, through yourself, you know, and through my tribe of bring who you are, I found back. God has given me my spirituality. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things you speak. So many things that have happened to me and during COVID is that I have had the chance to stop and to listen and to find that person and the, and my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. And when you start, when that is the greatest gift that God gives you is his purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And once you found that, which is for me, family civility, I feel like I'm on a cloud and I pray every morning. Every morning I'm thankful to wake up. I love Mondays. Mondays are my favorite day of the week because I know I'm going to help so many people. <laughs> and my show is on Mondays. <laughs> so we have five minutes left. Dr. Joseph, please pray us out of this lovely show and I cannot thank you again for being on the show. Thank you for all the lovely viewers today. Thank you for commenting. Your comments and your questions were absolutely phenomenal. And I'll definitely link you and Yamaja up um, at the end of the show. So all right. I, I leave the closing to you. Please remember next week, Monday, same time, same place, we're going to talk about family civility. And I look forward to seeing you all again. Absolutely. Well, dear Heavenly Father, we honor you. We glorify and magnify you above all things. And before we ask you for anything, God, we want to thank you in everything. We appreciate what you've done and what you're doing and how you'll continue to do it in, with, and through us. The key is for humanity to allow itself to collide with divinity. And today I can honestly say that we have done that. 
So as we continue to read, as we continue to exercise our faith, as we continue to learn about one another, as we continue to be civil, Father, I just ask that you would heal our land heal our land, heal our world, heal us individually that we may go out, Lord God, collectively and show people what it means to bear your name. Father, you're forever, ever, ever uh, the, the greatest thing that could have ever happened to any and all of us. Father, I pray that you would use us in a mighty way, that you would allow us to be a mouthpiece, uh, the hand, the feet of Jesus as we walk about this earth and show others love. We need you and what the world needs now more than ever before is more of you. So Father, I ask that as you continue to speak through our hearts and our minds, as you continue to reach those through this stream and even into the seat that they may be sitting in, that they would recognize and realize that it's all about you. It's not about us, it's all about you. We thank you for the family unit. We thank you for this show. We thank you for those uh, who have come before us, Lord God, and those who will come after us as they share how important the family unit is. Father, what we want most is that when others see us, that they see you. Is that when others hear us, they hear you. And when others experience us, they experience you. We're grateful. We're thankful, we're appreciative, and we just ask that you would have your way in the earth today and every day moving forward. I pray that you would heal our land and that you would change our minds and that you would help us, Lord God, from the inside out, that we would be more like you. Father, this show is all about you. We desire that people will come to know you in a greater way. So according to your word, be it unto us and show us a more excellent way on how we can reach people for the kingdom and for your glory. We thank you in all things and we appreciate you. In your, in your son Jesus name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Blessings, you. blessings to you. Enjoy the rest of the day. It's the Family Civility Show. You never, ever want to miss it because you never know who's going to show up and how God is going to move. And remember this, it's not a movement. It's truly a lifestyle. So start in your home and watch how it spreads. If I could say one thing, please, ma'am, please, sir, let civility become contagious in your heart and spread throughout the other most parts of this world. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you so much, Dr. Renette Joseph, for being on the show. Thank you for watching today. And remember, be civil, civil to self and civil to others every day. Have a wonderful week. Have a blessed week. See you on Monday. Bye-bye.